Well, hello, friends. It is great to be with you on this day, and I praise God for the gift of this day. We are here together, and we are finishing off 2 Corinthians. We're in the 13th chapter, and so if you got your Bibles, I want to invite you to turn there, and I just, I want to celebrate the exciting journey. Um, you know, we have been through all of 1 and 2 Corinthians. We've seen Paul's interaction with this church, and I think what a powerful witness it is. What a powerful challenge it is to us in our faith walk and to the, the present day church and some of the challenges that we still face. So this has been an incredible section of scripture, an incredible part of the story that God has written to us and used the Apostle Paul to write this portion of it. Before we actually get into the scripture, I, I wanna kind of give you a heads up on what, what I'm planning on for the days ahead. Uh, next week, which uh, obviously Christmas day, uh, we'll be on Friday, but leading into that, we will do our, our daily devotions and we will do it around some of the Old Testament prophecies uh, around the prophesied Messiah. So that's what we're going to do our, our, our devotional Bible study around next week. And so I look forward to being with you again. And then I am going to take a break between uh, or in the week between Christmas and New Year's. And, you know, so I'm going to take that off and some of you might... Uh, might be a little behind, might still be catching up and uh, uh, doing the end of first career, pardon me, at the end of second Corinthians, and then you'll be moving on and, and be doing the Christmas pet prophecies actually post Christmas, which is perfect timing too. And then we'll start off in the new year. I'm not sure where we're going. And I just wanna encourage you, if, uh, if you have some, I guess I'll, if there's a book that you have a real passion for, that you'd love to spend time in, and, and you want to offer that up, I, I certainly would welcome that suggestion. I think anywhere we go in Scripture is powerful. It is God's Word written to us. Uh, but if there's something that you've had a hunger for, please don't hesitate to, to email me or text me or, or give me a call and uh, certainly you know consider that. Otherwise, uh, I'll just pick something and we'll go forward. So, But anyway, let's get into our text today. We're in chapter 13. Right off with the first verse, and Paul says, This will be my third visit to you. Every matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. I already gave you a warning when I was with you the second time. I now repeat it while absent. On my return, I will not spare those who sinned earlier or any of the others, since you are demanding proof that Christ is speaking through me. He is not weak in dealing with you, but is powerful among you. For to be sure, he was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by God's power. Likewise, we are weak in him, yet God's power will live with him in our dealing with you. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do, not realize, do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. And I trust that you will discover that we have not failed the test. Now we pray to God that you will not do anything wrong, not so that people will see that we have stood the test, but so that you will do what is right, even though we may seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. We are glad whenever we are weak, but you are strong, and our prayer is that you may be fully restored. This is why I write these things when I am absent, that when I come, I may not have to be harsh with my use, in my use of, of authority, the authority the Lord gave me for building you up, not tearing you down. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice, strive for full restoration, encourage one another, be in one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss, all God's people here send their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So Paul has written a very challenging letter in 1 Corinthians. He's written another challenging letter in a, in a very different way in 2 Corinthians. And he is he's really bringing forth a deep challenge to the Corinthian church. He has warned them about these false teachers that are in their midst. He's warned them about their, you know, how they're going to be leading them astray. And apparently has already, you know, they've already led them astray in, in a number of ways. And Paul is just urging them to draw back to the truth that they know. And I think this is such a, a powerful 
passage that Paul concludes his letter with, especially in verse 10, when he says, this is why I write you these things when I am absent, that when I come, I may not have to be harsh in my authority, use of authority, the authority that the Lord gave me for building you up, not tearing you down. Everything that Paul has said, it's not to be there with a, the pointing finger and criticizing them and telling the, the Corinthian church how terrible they are. It's not shredding them and tearing them down and, and telling them how awful they are. Instead, he wants to build them up. He wants to challenge them to rise to the heights of that for which they have been saved. Friends, that, that, that is still the challenge in the present day church. And when, when we think about preaching and teaching in the present day church, it ought not to be for tearing others down. It ought not to be, to be the element of just, just hemming people into a corner and convincing them how sinful, how rebellious, how, how against God they are. Rather, it ought to be the challenge that we constantly lift up that God's rich love, abundant mercy, and mighty grace are poured out toward us, and, and it, all of it invites us to respond to respond and allow the Holy Spirit to flow through us, allow the full life of Christ to live in us. Every ounce of teaching in the church, every message from the church, every witnessing from every amount of witnessing from the church ought to do that. And so when we think about that in our own lives, when we think about that as, as we consider the people that we are around and we see, you know, that maybe there are, there are those who are living apart from Christ or they've strayed from Christ and and we're tempting to be tempted to be judgmental or condemning or that, that that is not our call our call is we ought to seek the best for them we ought to be eager for them to to you know reconnect with god to build that deep connection but never to do so by criticism and hemming them into a corner but rather simply by bringing forth accountability in in all of that centered in love that is what christ did for us he poured out love to us he, he brought accountability to us and he died on the cross in order to pay the penalty for our sins and open to us new life. Paul wanted to share that life with the Corinthian church. He desires to share it with us through his word today. And I praise God for, for this journey that we have been on. I just celebrate all that he has taught us. And, and friends, I don't think we've covered it all. If you, if you don't know me about that, it's... Uh, I've studied through the Bible many, many times, and every time I open it up, uh, I mean, we could go turn around, and in January, we'd study right back through First and Second Corinthians, and I think we would be amazed at how, how much more we glean from it. Scripture is constantly and always interpreting us. It's interpreting us where we are in our faith walk. It's interpreting us in terms of our areas, of our struggle, of our belief, and now that we have walked through these two books, and, and there's been so much growth that we've experienced. We are not the same people as we were before we started. We have gone through these. These, are these, these scriptures have shaped our life and changed our thinking and changed our hearts. And, and now, if we were to go back through them again, and I encourage you, if you want to do that on, on you know, your own personal journey, go for that. Go back in and dig in. Because what will happen is there's another layer that, that you will dive into. There's another depth that you want. Some things that that were foreign or that were new to you, now, they're, now they'll be integrated into your life. And now there's that, that next layer, that next depth to dig into. And, and that's what Scripture is constantly doing. So we always spend time in the Scripture. We always allow Scripture just to shape us. And that's why every day of our lives, we ought to spend time in the Word and allow the Lord to shape us through His Word, through His Spirit, through our time in prayer communication. We are always growing in the Lord. The world's never going to quit proclaiming its message. It will keep on trying to shape us in its image, but we desire to be shaped in the image of Christ Jesus. And so we continue to delve into Scripture, to, to invite Scripture into our hearts and into our minds. So friends, it has been great being with you on this journey. I, I look forward to seeing you for uh, the next few days, next week, as we dig into some of the prophecies and some of the Scriptures proclaiming the birth of the Messiah and what a celebration it'll be as we gather on Christmas Eve and celebrate that our Messiah is given. Praise be to God. Well, it has been great being with you today. Pray that you always know, always know that God loves you, and so do I. Have a blessed day.